What's up guys, my name is Darren Jackson. Welcome back to the channel, hopefully you're doing amazing. And if you've been following news on the stock market at least a little bit, then you probably have an idea that everybody is trying to leave Robinhood yet again. And no matter what your reason is, whether it's what's happened last week or what happened a few months ago or even a few months before that, I think the more important question is, where should I invest instead? So that's what I wanna talk about in this video today. But keep in mind guys, I'm only gonna go over brokerage apps that I am accustomed to, that I've actually had experience with, because I wanna make sure I provide you guys with enough information to persuade you in whatever direction, not just review specific brokerage apps that I know people have used. So with that being said, I'm not gonna cover brokerage apps like Schwab, TD Ameritrade, or E-Trade. However, I do like doing brokerage app reviews, so if there is a specific brokerage app that I may have not talked about that you want me to, then please leave a comment below and I'll definitely take some notes and look into it. But with that being said, before we talk about what brokerage apps you should put your money to instead of Robinhood, I think it's safe to say that we need to review what we all enjoyed about Robinhood and what we're escaping from. So let's talk about that first. So anytime somebody asks me, where should I invest my money into, especially if they're a new investor and this is gonna be their first time, one of my first options is always Robinhood. And one of the biggest reasons is their interface. I never realized when I started investing how important the user interface of a brokerage app is for new investors, but it makes sense because as a new investor, the first app I seriously started using was Robinhood. They lay out everything in a really clean way and they give you all the information that you need in that specific order, whether it's how your stocks are doing or how your total portfolio is doing from today, within the past month, couple of months, all time. It lays it out for you so you see how your actual brokerage strategy is doing for you completely. It also gives you information on the news with individual stocks and the news for the stock market overall so you can determine if this is going to impact your actual portfolio so you can determine what decisions you're gonna make. It's just an overall clean app. Everything is pretty spelled out for you. I do also like the fact that it gives you opportunity to invest in obviously stocks and ETFs and some index funds and cryptocurrency as well. Even though I don't have experience investing in cryptocurrency with Robinhood, it's pretty cool that it offers you that because not a lot of brokerage apps seem to do that as well. And besides some of the other features like fractional sharing, which is amazing, the one thing that I feel like attracted people the most to Robinhood and maybe still attracts them to this day is the fees or like thereof. So not only does Robinhood not charge you any commission fees per trade of any particular stock, but it also doesn't charge you for signing up and it doesn't require any type of deposit fee. As a matter of fact, it actually rewards you with the stock upon signing up and making your first deposit. So it's like you're getting free money without having to spend so much. So I think those are some of the biggest reasons why people were attracted to Robinhood. But then obviously there are reasons aside from what happened last week that people are trying to leave. For starters, customer service, where is it? Robinhood is supposed to be one of the biggest brokerage apps on the market. I think it has over millions of users, yet the only customer service they allow is an email, which is really ridiculous. And then also they have an experience of having their brokerage apps freeze. Now, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that around the times it was happening to them, it was probably happening to other brokerages, but that's something that we're not trying to deal with. So now that we have all that laid out, I'm gonna review some brokerage apps that I've used that may be some good selections for you guys to move your money into, and we're going to grade them based off the user interface, the type of investments that they have, the fees and other features that they offer. So here we go. So let's start off with one brokerage app that I don't use ridiculously often, but I use every now and then, and that's Webull. Webull being the new kid on the block provides a lot of benefits, which we'll get into in a second, but as far as securities you can invest in, they offer stocks, ETFs, index funds, and cryptocurrency. They're actually the only brokerage app on my list that offers cryptocurrency, so that makes them pretty eye to eye with Robinhood, which is why I rated them so high for that category. Now, as far as their user interface, I gave them a bit of a lower score because they pretty much have everything you need and maybe a little bit too much. And the layout of it honestly isn't as crisp, I guess, as Robinhood. It's kind of messy with all the types of graphs that they have. They actually offer level two market data, some data for free, which is really cool if you know how to use it. 
but everything else is it's kind of messy however since you are moving from one brokerage app to potentially this one that means you have some experience with investing so the user interface shouldn't be as intense it does give you other information such as news within the stock market which is really cool and it does offer some type of social media aspect to where you can pull up some news or individual stock and you can see some comments that have been posted about it you can communicate with other people that aspect's pretty cool. There is another brokerage app that I feel like does that even better, but we're gonna get to that in just a second. So I said that there's a lot of benefits to Webull being the new kid on the block, and those benefits come in with the fees because there are none. So they don't charge you any commission fees. There's no minimum deposit upon signing up. And on top of that, they are so known for offering so many promotions, whether you're somebody that already has a Webull brokerage app and wants to bring somebody else on, or you're brand new and you wanna bring yourself on. As a matter of fact, if you sign up right now, they're actually offering four free stocks once you sign up and make your initial deposit. So I'll make sure I leave my link down low so you can get your free stocks. And of course, I'll get some too. Obviously, it'll be great to get the help too, because boy's not monetized yet so really appreciate it but all in all that's why i give their fee rate such a high score as far as their features they have a lot they also offer options trading one thing that i actually didn't know about until last week is that they have extended hours so with the stock market it's typically open from 8 30 a.m central to 3 p.m central with extended hours you're given a couple of hours prior to do trading and a couple of hours after so maybe 7 to 5 or 5 30 p.m so that's a lot of extended time to be able to buy or sell stocks which could make you a lot of money another thing that Webull has is their ipo center and their ipo center actually gives you information on companies that are preparing to ipo and into the stock market if you pull up information on stocks like bumble right now and robin hood you're not going to find it but you will find it on Webull. so that aspect is really cool and it gives you a lot of information on market value and other stuff like that and one of the other features that I really do enjoy is paper trading. Paper trading basically gives you the opportunity to buy and sell stocks with fake money. Basically, that's beneficial because if you have some type of strategy that you want to implement with your real money, you can test it with your fake money and see how that works out for you. And then there's other competitions that you can do within Webull, which I actually haven't tried yet, but that seems pretty cool. So all in all, I feel like Webull is a great investing app to go to from Robinhood. Aside from the user interface being kind of confusing, I feel like it's something you can get used to, so it's definitely a great option. Now next on my list is M1 Finance. So M1 Finance does offer stocks, ETFs, bonds, but they also offer retirement. So I think they do that because M1 Finance it's kind of meant to be a short-term and a long-term investing app. I have a few videos about that. I'll leave one up above if you're ready for some details on that. As far as the user interface, it's pretty basic. There's actually not much to it. It gives you your overall portfolio and how that's doing, which is really cool. You can click on it and get the details of each stock that's within the pie, which is what M1 Finance is famously known for. It's actually a very clean strategy. They also have a section where you can get news about the stock market and finances in general and how it may affect your stock. So you can make decisions based off that. It's a bit cleaner than Webull in my personal opinion, but there's that. And there's honestly not much else to it. So I didn't give it a complete five out of five, but it's still a high score. Now, unfortunately, why I think M1 falls off is the fees that they have. So now they don't charge a fee for trading stocks, which is really good, but they do require a deposit before you can make your first investment. And that deposit is $100. Now it's not a huge amount of money to some of us, but to the rest of us, it is. And when you're comparing it to other brokerage apps that may not require minimum deposit or minimum deposit even less, it kind of makes M1 Finance unappealing. But if you can get past that, I definitely think it's a great app to use. Some of the reasons that it is a great app to use lie on its features. For one, it has customer service. Now, when you click on the help center, it automatically takes you to an email. But if you actually Google search customer service for M1 Finance, there is a phone number, which it's great. It's really something Robinhood needs to implement. I'm not sure why they haven't done that yet. They also offer margin investing just like Robinhood does. And margin investing is literally just borrowing money from the brokerage app in one finance to be exact. And for however much money you borrow, you have to pay a certain amount of interest every single month. And you take that borrowed money and you invest it. Hopefully you make more money and then you can take what you owe to M1 and pay it back. And you essentially just made money out of nothing. It's very risky and hopefully you know what you're doing, but it's great that they offer that if you do know what you're doing. And considering that this is supposed to be kind of a long-term type brokerage app, they do offer retirement accounts, which is really great. And they also offer joint accounts. So you and your significant other, or you and your friend can combine funds and create your own pie and invest into it. So I really like that feature. That's a feature I don't think a lot of brokerage apps has, so it helps them one stand out, but also helps them one stand out by it charging a deposit fee that's pretty high. Even though that does go to your actual portfolio, 
So you're kind of weighing out some things, but I still think it's a great investment app to look into. Next up is Fidelity. Now I really like Fidelity because out the gate, it is probably the oldest and most experienced company with a brokerage and investment app out there ever. I think they were open in 1946. And just like these other apps, they offer you stocks, ETFs, bonds, index funds, and even retirement accounts. Again, not too many brokerage apps do that. But when it comes to their interface, it's pretty, nah. <laughs> Fidelity is one of those brokerage apps that seems like they're meant for the desktop. Actually, when you go on the desktop, it looks a lot cleaner than it is on the actual phone brokerage app itself. You get the basic information, but you have to change the settings so you can see your account first when you open the app, just like a lot of other brokerage apps. And unlike M1 Finance and Robinhood and Weeble, it doesn't give you the immediate information and grabs on particular stocks that you may be investing in out the gate which is kind of annoying you have to go to the search box to get that information up but if you can look past that the user interface is okay as far as features it's not really too much of anything that stands out so i've kind of combined that with the user interface but the fees are great as far as because there isn't any as well no commission fees no initial deposit fees they don't offer a free stock once you invest into it but it is a trustworthy company. I think that might actually be the biggest feature. It's very trustworthy and that's something we're looking for after the whole Robin Hood situation. And finally, the last one on my list is a brokerage app that I talked about pretty recently and that's Public. Now Public is a brokerage app that also offers you stocks, ETFs, bonds, and other stuff like that. I believe they don't offer retirement accounts, but that's okay as well. They don't receive a five out of five maybe, but they're up there. Their user interface, is really cool as far as what their goal is, which we'll get into in the feature section, but the user interface is very clean. It tells you on the top how much you've made percentage wise and overall that day. It gives you your actual portfolio with the charts on how you've done for that day, that week, all time, just like Robinhood and your list of stocks and the information and such. It's pretty clean. It's honestly one of the cleanest on my list in comparison to Robinhood, maybe aside from M1 Finance, except it offers you a bit more. It also gives you news on the stock market, your individual stocks and things that are going around around the world that may affect your stocks just as well. So I think those are really beneficial. And of course for fees, it's great. There aren't any at all. There is no initial deposit. There is no commission fee. As a matter of fact, if you sign up, they give you a free slice of any particular stock. Now the free slice is kind of tough. So a slice for public is just another word for fractional sharing. And the slice can range up to maybe six to $12. And then it gives you a selection of stocks that you can put that money towards. You won't know how much you're getting until you sign up, but regardless, it's free money. But keep in mind, and this kind of is a con with public on this aspect, with fractional sharing, it's not really completely fractional sharing, at least from what I see. So. If you have a dollar and 50 cents and you want to put it towards Tesla, it will actually only let you put a dollar, which kind of sucks. It's only beneficial if you have dividends and it goes back and adds it up back to a dollar and you invest it. It's kind of inconvenient, depends on how you feel. But the features is what I think makes this company stand out. Now I said Webull has a social media aspect within it, but it's definitely not as major as Robinhood. I have a video about public, make sure you check that out, but I basically describe public as if Tesla had a baby with Robinhood. It has all the interface and brokerage app like stuff like Robinhood does without all the drama. But it also has the implementation of Twitter being able to make quick posts and have people comment and do and tag stuff. And the way that public does that is giving you the opportunity to share what exactly you're investing into buying or selling and why you can have conversations with the people you can do group chats and all that good stuff it's not completely public which is great because when you buy something you share it, it doesn't tell people how much you're buying or if you're selling it doesn't tell people money wise how much you profited it does give them a percentage so i think being able to communicate with people and getting advice about stuff like that is great and those features help public stand out amongst all the other brokerage apps within that aspect. And another thing I really do love about public, which falls under the features, is their IPO center. Similar to Webull, it gives you information on the IPO. Now we'll give it to Webull that it probably offers more information as far as like expected market value, but public is amazing. So I mentioned Bumble. If you actually type Bumble on public, it gives you a timeline history of how Bumble started, 
who their owners were and where they are today. And then they'll give you as much information as they can about Bumble's IPO details. On a side note, there isn't much at the moment, so that's why it doesn't say much at the moment. But I really love that aspect of it. So overall, those are some options that I feel like anybody that is actually trying to leave Robinhood can pick towards. I did include Acorns. There's specific reasons I did. If you want me to talk about that, I can, but I do have videos about Acorns. I'll leave those up there as well. But let me know what you guys think. Are you actually leaving Robinhood? And if so, where are you gonna put your money towards? And if you're staying with Robinhood, definitely leave a comment letting me know why. I personally still have my money with Robinhood, but I'm in the air right now. I'm still trying to figure that out. But please, let's definitely communicate. And speaking of which, make sure you watch some of these other videos, which I hope helps you guys on your investing journey as it has in mine. I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching. And until next time, take care.